I miss the times when an African man would get anchored, then they could go kicking rocks. I miss the times when an African man would get anchored, then they could call their counterparts, let's meet at a place like this one, then they do some, yeah, they exchange some blows. I miss the times when, as an African man, you could differ with a fellow African man. Then, the, that story will never reach the women at the villages. That story will remain between, as a secret between the two of you. I miss the times when any time was an African man would disagree with another African man. You would call elders to solve the differences between you. That said, what's happening between Ayam Marwa and Ivan? That's not what we expect for an African man. That shows how weak you are. That shows how you are not able to sort a difference between you and your counterpart. That shows how you disrespect our culture. That shows how you, are, you can never be uh, a trusted African. Yeah? That shows how you are not a Pan-African. For this matter, these guys are different because of a woman. They differ because of, of an intruder. Someone from a distant place, someone from a different continent, yeah? I've been following your conversation and I can tell for sure that none of you is so African. None of you <laughs> understands the values of an African man. So I watched the live whereby Marwa was talking about how Ivan was trying to snatch his woman. Ivan still has agreed on the same. They disagreed because of a woman. And Ivan came, out, came with an evidence, yeah? He came up with the evidence, how you guys started it. How you guys were picking that lady from the airport and uh, Marwa was all over touching, touching the girl. Damn. To an extent, she had no, no trust with her anymore. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Ivan has gone to an extent of talking about how horny uh, Marwa was. Yeah. To an extent that... Uh, he couldn't want to see Ivan uh, entertain this guy, but what kind of entertainment is this? I think he left downstairs because Mawa could not handle his impulses. At this point, he has requested for Paulina to go upstairs with him so many times that, you know, the mood is kind of off now between the two. But when he went upstairs, we still didn't know if he's coming down or not. So again, we just sit in the kitchen area, just talking. So. Once I realized Mao is not coming back down, because when he went upstairs, I thought that he was just going to the bathroom. Once I realized that he wasn't, and that he was just going to stay in his room, I, I texted him. So I'm going to try to put the messages here. So I said to him, are you OK, bro? Because I really, I don't know what's going on at that point. And he responded, it's so strange that you can't give me time with my girl. You just want to entertain her. Like, honestly, what's that? <laughs> and I said, bro, are you serious? Because remember, this is a guest in my house. Mawa is a guest. Paulina is a guest also. I'm in the kitchen area. Where am I supposed to go? I'm supposed to run away to my bedroom? I didn't understand what was happening. I'm just, we just had dinner. We could even play cards or, you know what I'm saying? Play chess. This is a normal thing. Somebody comes over your house and you entertain them, right? Mawa, I don't know how it's done in your village, man, but when somebody comes over, it is custom for the person who welcomes the guests to be around the guests and discuss different things. And we talk about different subjects does not mean that you can partake in the conversation. You remove yourself because you showed her from the car that you were extremely horny. And at this point, She's not trying to go upstairs with you because she knows what you're trying to do. But she's tired and she just wants to talk. 
but you keep shooting yourself in the foot with all these requests. I mean, you can see, guys, the way he was holding his pants, you know, he, he, he wanted to go upstairs with her right away, and she saw that, and she was completely turned off. So when I texted him, that was the response. After that, I waited a little bit of time, and I wanted Paulina to go upstairs and check and see if he can come back downstairs or see if they can, they can stay in the room or whatever the case might be. They can figure it out. I was being a good host. You instead was just being a freaking horn dog. So throughout the evening, Mawa kept asking the girl to go upstairs. Eventually, he got tired of it and he went upstairs himself. He left her downstairs. Now, I have to admit, when he left, I didn't think he was not going to come back. I thought that he was just going to use the bathroom and then he's going to come back down. But he didn't. He never came back down. So it was after like 15, 20 minutes that I figured, wait, wait, where is Mawa? Like, how come he's not here? He didn't come down. So I told, you know, Paulina to go upstairs and check upon him. I asked Paulina several times to go back upstairs and check upon him. She did one time. He didn't say anything back to her. She went back a second time to ask him if he's okay. And this time he kicked her out. He said, get out of here. I don't want to talk to you. Remember, this girl just got in the country. These are the very first few hours they spent together. But Mawa is so entitled because he bought the ticket. He feels like she needs to pay her taxes now. Bro, we're forgetting about boycott. <laughs> the boycott. Remember? You're supposed to respect your fellow man's girl. <laughs> I understand. This was uh, Ivan's house. But that doesn't warrant taking his woman. Mara's woman. Yeah? Though, Mara, whenever we go to someone's house, you need to respect them. Whether you are a superstar or not. But there, we're learning that you send uh, this girl air ticket from a country to uh, Washington, D.C. The same money could have been used to pay an hotel. Now you chose to depend on someone, someone feeding you, someone housing you, someone driving you around, and you're sending a woman uh, money to come visit you. These guys were best of friends. Anyone who has been following Ivan and uh, Ayamaro at the time they were meeting, they were so good friends. Though we really don't like by the, the fact that uh, Mara disclosed that uh, Ivan was talking negative about Africa. Ivan talked negative about Kenya and he disclosed the same. He talked about the crime in Nairobi. Yeah, we always have crime everywhere. I know. There is no city in this world with zero crime rate. You agree with me? It's so disclosing the way Nairobi is so prone to crime. It's not the solution. But there, we always hide some things. We never talk about the crime in Chicago. Yeah, we know uh, Chicago to be one of the biggest uh, these cities or states. Yeah, in America. But we never talk about that. We always pick the positive side of Chicago. Nairobi. We have a national park at the city center, a game park. And uh, you never talked about that. Now you're talking about crime. And tell him I'm Maro's girlfriend not to come to Africa. Doing this only to discredit Maro. This is not good. Whether you, you host in the guy or not, whether you feed in the guy or not, you need to respect fellow man. Boycott must be respected. Meanwhile, I'm coming live from this beautiful wilderness. This is Maasai land. Yeah, you can see some guy feeding his cattle from that side. So I'm gonna be walking that side. I'm, I'm hoping that guy is gonna accommodate me. So I wanna have a talk with him. Let's hope that uh, is going to give me the opportunity to have a discussion with him. Though we have some unfriendly people, like that one person, you know, 
the warriors have been trained to defend the community against an external aggression. So me coming to this point and they don't know me, chances of denying me an opportunity to film, they are very high. Still we might have been we might be having someone around who is trying to protect that guy. Yeah. Just in case uh, this, uh, this is an area so prone with uh, kettle rustling. Sort of like that there is always that one person close to the kettle, then someone else hiding somewhere. Probably holding weapons and they wanna see what I am up to. Well, but Africa is beautiful, right? Very beautiful. Very beautiful. Yeah. So I want you to leave your genuine comment, a genuine reaction about the differences between Aya Marwa and uh, Ivan. This has gone to an extent whereby instead of Ivan uh, creating sensible content and uh, showing the world the way he used to do, traveling, yeah, having a good time and uh, I'm happy that uh, these guys, when they met, Ivan really utilized that opportunity, working with Marwa, a very uh, influential YouTuber. I've been working with influential people as well, African Tigers, very influential, but I've never been able to uh, match Ivan's, uh, Ivan's uh, energy. Yeah? We give Sisa what belongs to Sisa. So, I, Ivan has been able to grow his channel from, I think, 7,000. Maro left that guy at 7,000 subscribers. Now he's at 33,000 and he's, he has managed to travel the world. Yeah. The whole credit still goes to Maro. Maro. Maro made him. But you know, yeah, Maro made him. But the guy had the resources. The guy also said Maro. Not everyone. Everyone here has something to offer, you know? So it was a win-win situation. So does it mean that uh, we don't have someone out there, someone who can uh, get these two men together and have a discussion with them yeah, I know they have friends. They have friends. Yeah, we have the uh, mutual friends. Someone whom they might have met in the U.S. And uh, this person is close to both of them. Meanwhile, Wardemeyer and African Tigers they are doing a good job in Barbados. That's how being a pan-african means yeah supporting a black nation out there these guys are doing an amazing job and africa is so proud of african tigers and what am I? so they are representing them africa so well there and everyone should be so much proud of these two people meanwhile here you have the Maasai people yeah they they taking care of uh, the cattle I want to be approaching the guy and having, having a discussion. Yeah, I'll show you how this area looks like. But well, it's a beautiful place. I would encourage everyone to visit this place, some big bulls. It's a big bull. So it's a good time out, out here, trying to take a walk. The just the good. That's why Morani am I warrior? Oh, in Moran. Oh, that's good. So Moran, you graduated at what age? No, Nasema, you have graduated from the stage of Moran to the other stage. Above eighteen. Above eighteen. Oh. Oh, that's good. 
That's good. I used to look after Keto just like you. Like in Nikua Ejikidogo Sana. Before class 8, uh, uh, only. at the age of 13, 12, 13, 12, 13, let's say to maximum 14, I was looking after Keto. I, I used to enjoy this life. Amazing reception there. So I'm now leaving. Wanna go back to where I started. So you see how guys keep a uh, large you say large herd yeah, of cattle or large flock of cattle. Herd of cattle, yeah. <laughs> I was in school long time ago. That's why I'm talking about the ancient man. How we used to live. How we used to live together as Africans. But they, I used to had uh, this kind of uh, kettle. Had numbers of kettle as a young boy. And every evening, your father is expecting that uh, you're supposed to take back every cattle and goats yeah you're supposed to account for every goat or cattle or sheep you're supposed to account for them failure to which you don't even qualify to be uh called a man something a secret i, I was circumcised at a very young age so that tells you that uh I was taught responsibilities. Being responsible as an African man at a very young age. So looking after herds of cattle was never a problem to me. I was used to that. I have a mark here, somewhere here. So I was hit by one of the cows as I was untethering them to take them to the junk or the wilderness. So instead of going to the wilderness, I, I was taken to hospital. Yeah. But no one assigned me that duty. It was my own decision. I'm supposed to un untether these cows and take them to the jungle. When your employees are not available, you know, it doesn't mean that. Uh, when these people working for you are not there, these cattle should never eat. Yeah, they eat. And you know, as a man, that's why I'm telling you that you are taught responsibilities at a very young age. Look at this place. Nobody's around. Assuming that you met a wild animal here, because always in the jungle we have leopards, we have lions, we have buffaloes. But in, as an African, that doesn't scare us a lot. Because we are used to walking from school and meeting them. We used to meeting them at our... At our... What do you call them? Where are we looking after cattle at? Yeah. In the wilderness. Big snakes as well. I remember as a small boy, I could uh, kill those snakes. Though it's outlawed. It's not allowed. You're supposed to protect them. But you feel the <laughs> you feel good anytime you do that. Just the the same way the Maasai people are so much happy. You feel uh, you now becoming a man anytime you kill a lion. Look, nobody's around. So though we have some. The house is there. Yeah, we have some people at that side. Small kids even. Let me ask you a question. 
Why are you not subscribing to this channel? Why are you not subscribing to Gulf Sea Africa? The course is to showcase Africa to the world. I wanna, you know, everyone, everyone's showcasing Africa. They're showing the town and the good places and maybe the bad places, but the urban centers. Me, I'm in the jungle. I'm showcasing both jungle and urban everywhere. Subscribe to this channel. Share the link with your friends. Anything you do, you must have that someone who has ever inspired you to do what you do. So who inspired you to do what you do? Leave a comment. Let's have a discussion. And if you have a topic that you wish I could tackle, say a comment down. Yeah, say it. I'm going to tackle. You can always uh, chat me on my WhatsApp. I'm so free to having a conversation with anyone. I always leave my contacts. WhatsApp, email. Let's have a discussion. So that's a river somewhere there. So I made it. I remember here ago I used to film with my phone and it, it, it used to be a very big challenge to me walking in the streets and you know filming with your phone is so unprofessional and uh, many Africans don't like being filmed because why are you filming me? We have we still have those those people with the mentality that uh, you're going to sell my image. <laughs> I think someone's lied to Africans that uh, we sell their images to some people. You know? At some point, colonization is a mindset. So you have been colonized your mind. You believe that anyone living outside Africa is an enemy. That's not true. We have that one person living in Caribbean. Are they our enemies? They are not in Africa. <whistles> the water is so dirty. I wish to end the video at this point. So my name is Go See Africa. Whoever is watching me for the first time, kindly subscribe. Whoever has always been coming back to watch my videos, that can go and appreciate. I appreciate you so much. So keep on sharing the link and help me spread the African gospel to the wall. Have a good bye.